call to order the Gladstone City Commission regular <coughs> meeting of September 28th. We're going to do invocation and pledge of allegiance by Commissioner Thompson. Lord, we are meeting today to conduct matters of business. Guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that our affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being our source of guidance today. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All uh, right, roll call. Mayor Bostrick? Here. Commissioner Gay? Here. Commissioner Nemechek? Here. Commissioner Thompson? Here. Commissioner View? Here. All right, first up is public comment. Okay, next will be the consent agenda, the city commission from September 14th, the audit work session of September 21st, and payment and bills. question I don't I've never heard of Resco Electric could you please tell me where they're from and what they did Resco Electric we we purchase electric items from them they've been a vendor of ours for many years um, items that the supplies. electric department uses yeah like wire and wire um, lighting maybe yeah. Do you know where they're from? They're out of Chicago. Chicago. Oh, Kim yeah, has it the looks bill. like yeah. It looks like poles. 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 Where? Electric poles. Electric poles. Oh. I'm not sure. It says pole, um, and okay. then a bunch of numbers after it, which I don't know what those are. But <laughs> they are out of Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. Okay. Chicago. Yep. Did we finish changing all the light bulbs and the street lights? Not finished. Well, okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. All right, got a motion by Commissioner Nemechek and support by Commissioner Gay. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, next up is the public hearing for the re 2015 Renewable Energy Plan. Did you want to talk about it first? Uh, sure. Um, this is, uh, we opened the public comment period uh, 60 days ago, and then tonight we're here to have a, a public hearing in case <clears throat> anybody in the public wants to comment on our 2015 Renewable Energy Plan. Um, WPPI helps us with this along with MMEA. We're, we're members of both entities. And um, this is to be in compliance with Public Act 295. Uh, we have to tell um, Michigan Public Service Commission how much, um, how much of our total portfolio is with renewable energy. So the report is attached. Uh, did we have any? Comments submitted? Nothing Nothing was submitted in the last 60 days. So we do need to open up public comment to the people here tonight. Okay, you wanna start the clock? That Iowa wind farm must be huge. Produces 135,000 megawatts. Unbelievable. Wonder how many windmills they must. Mm -hmm. well. Are we allowed to make a comment on this ourselves? No, no. not yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
public hearing is closed now. Any discussion on it? I just want to, I went through it so I would understand it a little mm -hmm. more thorough. And I guess what I liked about it, Gladstone will not experience any additional cost to comply. I just want the general public to know that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Gladstone, uh, the wholesale rate Gladstone pays to WPPI Energy does not include a premium for the cost to comply with the renewable energy standards. So it's, it's mm -hmm. not a additional amount of money for us to comply with the act so and, and I just thought it'd be nice to let the people know that mm -hmm. okay. so we need a motion to yep. to approve the plan and then we'll submit it uh, to Michigan Public Service Commission I so move to uh, well I guess uh, 2015 renewable energy plan as presented to accept it. Mm -hmm. Support. All right, got a motion by Commissioner View and <coughs> support by Commissioner Gay. Any more discussion? <coughs> all right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, next is the sale of the ball field parcel. Yep, this item was tabled until tonight. Um, just a little update on this at the um, kind of the second half of my paragraph there. Don, we did receive a response from uh, Director Keith Craig, Director of the uh, DNR. Um, no response since the letter dated August 14th, so, though, so uh, late last week I did reach out to uh, Senator Casperson's office, um, just wondering where this public land strategy was at in the you know legislature is it next on their agenda is it next year you know um, Marty Fatante responded on behalf of Senator Casperson um, he said this is probably a, a 2016 issue uh, hopefully before you know November time frame so probably nothing coming real soon here but there are other people there's a local DNR person in Marquette that I was going to reach out to um, just to see we just I mean they should be able to give us something which way they're leaning if, if we could develop this parcel or not. So um, I, I think I'll go ahead and reach out to the um, market representative and then maybe a response is in order now. Let's see, his letter was dated August 15th, September. Going on two months, maybe we need to send him a reminder. <coughs> Director Craig. I thought we were going to contact the AG's office on this. Um, we did, but this is who he directed us to. Oh, okay. Right. So we sent a full detail letter to Director Craig, okay. and then he he did respond. So <laughs> at least we have some communication going back and forth. But so just you know, should we table it till November 9th? If I have something before then, I'll definitely bring it back. But if we have nothing to report, um, so moved. Okay. Table the item to November 9th, 2015. Support. All right. Got a motion by Commissioner Gay. Support by Commissioner View to table the ball field parcel to November 9th meeting. Any more discussion? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. All right. Next is the Bessie Playground Equipment Purchase. Nicole. You got seven copies of one picture in your packet. I thought Sorry. it was multiples, but I was wrong. I was being efficient, and I made enough copies for everyone, and she thought they were different pictures. <laughs> and them all to our friends and neighbors? You can. Oh, that's a good idea. Nicole Sanderson, Parks and Recreation Director. I'm here tonight to ask you to allow us to pay for the equipment that Bessie um, foundation allowed us and approved um, us to buy and place that up at the Ski Hill Sports Park com um, Complex. 
answer any questions you have. This is uh, being presented as a approving a purchase without RFP. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why is that? Um, due to the specific nature of the playground. Is this the only company that makes ma this manufactures playground? No, equipment? but makes this type of playground. Define this type of playground. This playground is unique, um, and we're going to be kind of fortunate to have this type of play playground. It's made up of, well, you can see the, the photos, large rocks. It's very, um, it helps children grow and play and learn for, through touch and feel and play. So it's, it's, very, it's, it's very unique. It's not wood like Kids Kingdom. No. It's the composite rock. Mm -hmm. They actually yeah. go out, they make molds of rocks and then they, they form these rocks and they move them in. Um, we wanted to make sure, because of the generation, generosity of Bessie, we wanted to make sure and do something a little bit unusual, something that was going to be bring people to Gladstone. We want to go to a playground. We want a unique one. We were the first ones to do the Leathers playground, the wooden playground that, that is in our park. So we had the opportunity to you know have the fun. So. Would we have done this without the Bessie's generosity? No, <clears throat> absolutely not. Was this, um, were we directed to this company or style or specific criteria by the Bessie Foundation? No. Okay. But the Bessie's did approve this? Yes. Right. They, they, they wanted to approve what we were putting in there though. Okay. Yes, we, we did have. Because we talked about the, the playground that was put in Escanaba by the Bessie Foundation. In the south side of town? Um, yes. Yeah. 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 So we've heard some comments regarding that playground. So we went back to the Bessies and said, how about this? Knowing they already paid for you know that one, and they approved this. Do we have any idea of what this is ultimately going to cost? It just yeah. says yeah. not Do to exceed $200,000. I do. Um, Who's going to install it? Ventura? Yes. And where are they located from? Do you know? the, the manufacturer is located, the people who build it, out of Minneapolis. Ventura is um, in a, a Michigan company out of Brighton. Um, Doug Smith is their representative. He's also the representative for um, the UP um, and, and upper lower Michigan. So we're lucky to have him. He's out of Manistique. Um, what was the second question? The question, the, I, my question was the total. What, what, do we have a total? What this they, is the cost? Bessie Foundation um, approved two hundred thousand dollars. I'm aware of that. So, but what is the? Do we the, have an estimate? Yes. Okay. So, with the engineered wood fibers, the cement um, guttering, you know, in capsule around it, the installation and the playground comes to. One hundred and ninety-nine ninety-five. Mm. And Ventura is in charge of putting the whole thing in. Yes, they'll bring up their crew to do it. They're certified to do that. And the Bessies like this. They did. They 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 really they were impressed that it was going to be something unique, something to hang their hat what, on. What's on the ground underneath? It's there? engineered wood. Um, fibers we could have went with the port in place you'll see that at different areas it's almost a rubber material yeah, that's what they got in Escanaba. yeah. and and we could have done that and that would have doubled the cost so what if you that? if you pay one hundred and forty six thousand dollars for equipment you might as well say you're gonna spend about a hundred forty What's the difference between regular wood chips and engineered wood chips they are a hard wood that do not decompose and if oh. you put them in a well-drained area which we have up there a, a sandy soil all you'll have to do is keep adding to them every two years and you'll have to add an inch or an inch and a half every two years do you have a um, obviously with the rest of the design and the material there there can't be much maintenance but do you have a cost an annual cost or what we do what we do within the, the city is myself and Jason Davis the assistant director for the parks and rec are certified playground safety inspectors I'm talking about the maintenance of it not necessarily <coughs> I, I, I'm aware of that I'm talking about to add that inch or inch and a half of those engineered chips do we have a cost on that well I have a cost on the labor so when I go out and I do my audit twice a year that would be my cost 
you know, my, my labor to do two times we do an annual inspection. At that time, <clears throat> excuse me, we tighten and any kind of moving parts, we, we, we try to, you know, do that on an annual basis twice a year. So that cuts down on any kind of replacement or things like that for moving parts. <coughs> so, so to supply 12 inches of the engineered wood fibers is going to be $5,796. Um, so that's 12 inches. So you can kind of say if we wanted to add an inch and a half every two years, maybe a thousand dollars. Okay. And also to clarify, this is not something that would be able to be paid for through the um, Dr. Mary Creek no. because it's not within the parameters set forth in the uh, in that fund. Okay. I did. I did reach out to Doug and I asked him. Um, he said he put in a playground in Escanaba 25 years ago um, from the lands. Escape structures who is Pintura and they have had no problems that was 25 years ago okay. so where the ball field is this going to be located um if you can check it out on our master on the plan that we have on the city's website for the sports park complex but it's located behind the house field to the right okay. as our plan called for what is that in the center there look the metal looks like metal framework I don't have a picture in front of me. Between the, an extra one. right oh. in the middle. Like a walking bridge, maybe? One this of the, uh, right here. Is it a bike rack, or what is that? No, that, those are the nettings. Netting. It's a, it's a, it's a climbing apparatus. Oh, it is? Mm-hmm. My, my, I have a question on, uh, I like the, the looks of the playground on that, but there's, there's no other comparable person that has anything similar to this where we need to not have the RFP process followed because I, I feel, you know, I mean, I'm not looking to be cheaper, I, I guess. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm just looking at just giving the opportunity <coughs> to anyone, or is there anyone else out there that does this type of playground, or is there something better out there that would hold up better, less maintenance or stuff. How do we find that out if you don't put your specifications out? And what's the policy for not having an RFP? How does that affect the city and other things they do if we keep circumventing some of the policies? Well, do you remember at the audit meeting, though, our auditors pointed out the commission has the right to not follow the policy. So I don't that, even know what the policy is. So that's why we're here tonight. Anything um, over $50,000, which the playground equipment is yep. over 50000 we would have to do a request for proposals and publish in the Action Shopper News, have competitive sealed bids. So we're, we're here tonight. Bessie approved this. They're paying for it. Right. We, we're, we're asking your permission to allow them to put in the playground that they've chosen I, for I us. I think this is a unique situation. I, I always get a little bit, uh, a bit of consternation when there's no RFP, but in this particular situation, it is a unique project. Um, this is money that Bessie has donated de donated to the city specifically for this. They've reviewed it. They've approved it. Um, I personally don't have any problem with it. Uh, the one thing I would ask is the, um, I know that there was supposed to be some sort of recognition um, put on the, <coughs> the playground. Uh, is that included or is that something additional that we have to? Uh, we're, we're working on that right now. Okay. okay. I know it's not a huge deal, science, but Bessie will sign it, acknowledging. We're we're working on that. Um, on Tuesday, my rec board is going to meet um, because of the. Of course, this is not the only donation that Bessie has made to the recreation department, and for that area. So there'll be other projects coming up. So we're going to talk about that at the rec board level, and then of course that'll come to you for final approval. Um, but yes, definitely, we plan on on doing something. I know it's not a huge expense. I just want to make sure that it's in that it's uh, going to be addressed, you know. Well, and, you know, we want to be respectful towards the foundation, and, of course, we want to build things that last so their children's children can enjoy them. So, once again, I, I it wasn't probably a playground I've been able to pick out without the donation. I probably, it was in my wish file, because I have a file of wishes. I wouldn't have been able to do this without the Bessie Foundation, but this is a playground, like I said, that is going to be unique, stand out, differentiate us from other playgrounds, and of course we're going to recognize them in a way that is sufficient. When, when will we start building this? As soon as you give me the okay. 
I mean, is it better to wait till spring or to do it now? No, it's ready. Did they say how long it would take them? Two weekends. Two weekends. I only know this because I spend time with a little three-year-old boy. And the one thing that would appeal to me about this playground is that he could go there and not need my assistance on anything. Mm -hmm. If you go to a playground that has swings, you're up pushing the swing. Or if you got a merry-go-round, this is really the little the little guys the little the little people can explore this without without having any adult support. Like Kids Kingdom, a wooden playground or a playground made out of rocks, which causes children to feel mm -hmm. and they can see it. And we didn't want the port in place. We want them to be able to scoop up the wood chips. We want them to learn and play and experience. And plus, the sports park is surrounded by woods, mm -hmm. so it's going to fit in aesthetically beautifully. And then plus, it, it will provide that learning atmosphere and hours and hours. I, one, one more thing, too. Um, as a recreation department, we try to put neighborhood playgrounds within a certain radius of other homes. And um, the Cameron School is the only playground up on the bluff, um, besides Wintergreen Woods. Which is, which is pretty far out. Um, I did take these plans to a play group, and I told them, what would you like to play on? And of course, the six-year-olds told me what they would like. I didn't make this decision by myself. And that this is really going to serve populations on that whole side of the bluff. This will act as a neighborhood playground. It'll also act as a, as a place for your kids to go when you're watching ball, but it's also gonna you know, satisfy that neighborhood playground need that is so very important when you're trying to buy or sell a home. If you're next to a park, ugh, your houses go, your housing prices go up at least 17%. So, so, so it, it's double fold. So, um, it's not just going to be for the ball season. It will, it will serve all those neighborhood families up there. I move that we purchase the Canyon Collection Playground for an amount not to exceed $200,000. Support. All right, got a motion by Commissioner Nemechek and support by Commissioner Gay to purchase the Panchera not to exceed $200,000. Any more discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Motion carries. I think everyone should understand too why playground equipment is so expensive because of the liability. Uh, I remember our our Lions Club was talking about a merry-go-round at the mm -hmm. at the Cameron School, and it was unbelievably expensive. It was like ten or twenty thousand dollars for a merry-go-round. It's, it's because of liability. When you when you go to the trainings, they'll tell you sixty-five percent goes into the into the R and D and the insurance. Yeah. So, and and just one more thing, um, every company is very competitive, so they all try to come up with their own little niche. You know, some have a lot of climbing things, you know. So this company that makes the rock playground is very unique. So if we want something like this, we have to go with this company. So I appreciate right. it. And once again, I, I appreciate the Bessie's donation. Without it, we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you. All right, thank you. All right, next up is the resolution celebrating Platter Day. This would be our second year celebrating Platter Day. Um, what is Platter Day? Um, it, it's just a day where we're encouraging people to wear plaid and have fun with it. There's no cost to the city. Um, just a fun day. I'd move and adopt a resolution for Plaid Your Day. Support. All right, you got a motion by Commissioner Gay and support by Commissioner View. Any support? Any uh, discussion? This isn't just us, it's like a worldwide thing, right? Well, the guy started it in Lower Michigan three years ago, and he's really um, causing it to grow in the UP. He, he now lives in the Marquette area. Um, I, I'm not sure how far it goes beyond Michigan. Actually, the mayor told me just a little bit ago that it, he got teased for wearing plaid with his co-workers. So yeah, the <laughs> owner of the, yeah, the creator. So now we're all yeah. proud to wear it, and he's showing it and having everyone else support him that way. And I, I think it's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. I should have wore plaid today. <laughs> Start ahead time. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next up is the 
WPPI contract extension. So we had a, a WPPI representative a couple meetings ago come and really explain the benefits of being a WPPI um, customer and you know what what these 51 communities do collectively. Um, but for the long term um, stability of WPPI, uh, they are asking uh, all 51 members to extend their contracts from 2037 out to 2055. And in here it says they need um, a minimum of 34 communities to support this for them to move forward. If they don't have the 34, these, this resolution and, and amendment would be null and void and our term would expire in 2037. This is going to allow WPPI to acquire and purchase power at a rate that is going to keep us well you know, well into the lower end as far as cost to purchase power. Um, it's basically they, they need commitments from um, commitments from their members in order to secure dollars and funding to build power plants or build wind farms or whatever um, other sources of you know power generation that they're looking at. So that's basically what this is. I, I read it. It's hard to understand. And I, I see an attorney said everything was okay, but right. My my question would be what benefit is it for the city to gain another eighteen years on a contract that they already have twenty two years left on when the changing energy sources in Michigan are undetermined right now? I mean, how many, how many people have signed up for this already, too? Do you have some um, idea? As of last Wednesday, September, no, um, when did this come through? So I, I believe there's six Michigan entity, six of the 51 are from Michigan, and Elger Delta, Barriga, Crystal Falls, and Nagani uh, commissions and boards have already said yes and, and signed the extension. Lance. Lance has now, too. I believe so. Um, so the other ent entities that have already approved this are not from Michigan, but they need a minimum of 50, 34 before March of 2016. But I, I think to answer your question, though, Steve, when do you remember when the gentleman was here? And if they need to bond right, for capital projects. They, they have four plants already that they draw from and the rest they right. buy. All, all I'm yeah. saying is we, we're committed for 22 years mm -hmm. right now. Yep. You want to commit for 40 years. I think it's our advantage to do so, Steve. It is? Yeah. I think that when other, when other cities like Escanaba was having trouble with rates and so on, we weren't. Well, it just... And it guarantees a lower rate for us in the future. Like I just said, this allows them to go out and procure sources of, sources of energy, and that keeps our rates reasonable. Where if you look at some other, a lot of other communities... Um, whether it be a large conglomerate that they're getting their power from or if they have their own utility, they're, um, some of them are looking at some very significant rate hikes as a result of some of the garbage coming out of the EPA. So this, and that was what, earlier in the agenda when we approved our sustainable, um, it was a public act 295, mm -hmm. um, you know, basically we're, we're staying in compliance with that by approving the, the that previous plan, um, to me, I would say this is kind of a no-brainer here. We need to uh, we need to stay on board with them and allow them to continue to pursue the most reasonable sources of power for city residents. That's going to translate to uh, reasonable costs for electricity. And if anyone questions that, compare your bill to someone who lives outside the city and doesn't get city power, and then you know you'll see what I'm talking about. Well, why don't we have a motion before we have any more discussion on this? Also a move. Support. Uh, motion by Commissioner Nemechek and support by Commissioner Gay. Is that a motion to approve? To approve the, uh, approve it, right? The extension. The yep. extension contract, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? They're, they're really well diversified, and I think that that really works for us. And being the big group they, that they are, 
you know, when they were going after the market, Marquette's power plant, and that was really going to drive rates, you know, the, the WPPI is so big that, you know, one little thing like that's not going to disrupt the whole power supply and the whole power price. So I, I, I think this is a good move. And they also have, um, they also have negotiated <coughs> um, out multiple years, they've negotiated rates for purchasing power as well. So it kind of flattens out that concern for instability in the markets with some of the stuff that is coming out from uh, various regulatory agencies. So any more discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, next up is the Fall Fest. Um, I talked to Amber today and she's uh, rearranged a few things in the lot next to the DDA building and we don't need to close Delta Avenue, but I don't believe Fall Fest was on our, um, at, at the beginning of the year, we any routine, you know, run, walk kind of things, we approve them kind of in, <clears throat> in a lump sum. This Fall Fest was not on there, so you're not, I'm not asking you to approve to close Delta Avenue. I'm just asking you to approve to have the event Fall Fest October 3rd uh, downtown. We have pony rides, petting zoo, face painting, uh, pumpkin decorating, games, a DJ, and food. Uh, the sponsors, Gladstone DDA, First Bank, Edward Jones, Bay Bank, and Sunnyview Farms. Um, Looked at the weather, looks like it's going to be a nice day, but a little cooler than it's been, so um, should be a fun day. I'll, I'll move that we approve the uh, Fall Fest for October 3rd. I'll support 2015. All right, got a motion by Commissioner View and support by Commissioner Thompson. Any more discussion? I think it's a nice community event uh, for the area businesses down Main Street. If you're going to bring in two, three hundred people, they have an opportunity with another event that the city of Gladstone puts on to help stabilize their businesses somehow or show themselves off to the people that are coming in. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, next up is the city manager's report. Um, I put on your table there tonight, um, Amber Hansen, our special event coordinator, came up with this newsletter. Uh, we're going to do it every other month. So um, this will be on our website. She was going to put it on her f Facebook page. Um, so has some good, good information, city information in there. Um, on your table tonight, I put a, a draft of the bond fact flyer. Um, I'm gonna, I haven't passed this by Miller Canfield yet. The bond attorney uh, said he would look at it to make sure we're not uh, promoting a yes vote in any way. These are just facts about the three um, projects. And then at the bottom, we did list uh, the amount of millage, the 1.86. If the bond passed in November, it would be an estimated 1.86 mills. And based on um, the various taxable values, what it would cost the homeowner monthly and then yearly. So I'll pass this by uh, Steve Mann, and if, if he doesn't, I mean, if he feels it's okay, um, we're going to send this out uh, in the October utility bills, which will go out probably around um, October 17th or so. So that'll be before the November election. Um, this Wednesday, I'll be in Marquette all day for the UP Energy Summit. Um, October 6th, I, you're probably going to get sick of us asking you guys to attend this, but engaging the public workshop, um, MEDC is putting this on. It's right here in the city of Escanaba, uh, 12 to 4, free of charge. Um, we, we do have a couple um, people from our boards attending, a couple staff people. Uh, Jay signed up. Any commissioners, if you'd like to attend, there's still time to sign up um, and attend this. So let us know if you'd like to go to that. And then I, there was just one question in the minutes from September 14th. Um, Ms. Irene St. Martin asked um, if the stump in front of her house was going to be removed. We do, we do um, have 
a bid out right now. We're collecting um, Wednesday, October 7th. We will open bids for uh, removing several stumps in the city. So that'll be coming back to the commission. Um, you know, how many should we remove and what the cost would be. So just to let Miss St. Martin know that her stump is on the list. So stay tuned. And that was all I had. All right, next up is City Commission and Community Reports, the 2015-16 uh, financial report. Yeah, Vicki Schrader, our city treasurer, is not with us tonight. Um, this, the report before you is through August 31st, 2015. Um, she didn't really have any comments to bring to your attention. If there's any questions, I can take note and get an answer to you. Any questions? Any questions on this? No. Okay. All right. Next up is the board and commission reports. Does anyone have any? Okay. Up next is public comment. <coughs> Ken Levine, 2722 South Hill Road, Gladstone. I like this, but. There's one thing you just didn't think about. How are all these kids going to get up there to play in that ground? The parents going to take them only on weekends or during the week? It's a nice looking fight. Okay, number two. I went to the compost pile this morning with Jim Getz. We picked up four wheelbarrows full of trash, picked up a tire, we picked up uh, balls, we picked up pop bottles, we picked up water bottles. Now, if anybody thinks that this is going to be a place that you can have the people be on your system, forget it. Number two, uh, I think I talked, I asked this question at the last meeting we were at. What I want to know, what is the qualifications for seasonal employees? What do they have to know to get the job there? I don't know if I'm, I think what they got to know is how to cut grass, how to weed whack, how to prim bushes, and whatever else little things. The reason I bring this up, I had three people come to me at the compost. One put in an application in March, never got us called. A lady came up there with her daughter. She came down to check if she can get a job, no job. <coughs> Another one, the same thing. <coughs> now, if the qualifications are something that they can't do, why aren't we hiring Gladstone people? We pay the taxes here, not the townships. We should hire, hire uh, Gladstone people first. First, this girl, two girls came up from the parks. They both were from Rapid River, and they get hired that week before on a Monday. That's not right to the people of Gladstone. We pay the taxes, not the township. I can understand people moving out of town because the taxes are heck, almost half what we're paying. I don't know why, why this is happening. We should be doing the things for the people of this town. We are the citizens that pay the taxes. We the people that live here. We don't live in the townships. My sister law my sister lives there. I got other relatives that live there. I got relatives that live in Escanaba Township too. But the thing is, Gladstone should have first priority on them jobs. And I know it ain't been being done because I've seen it. Okay, that's all I got. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Levine. Anyone else? My name is Orvis Velikett. I live in 34 Maple View Drive. Now, I'll ask you, Darla, personally, and I want an answer. Why didn't you answer Ken on the qualifications of people <clears throat> to work uh, in this city? We cannot. The public comment is for you guys to ask us well, in other words, you, we, we got no discussion we, between no, the commission here. and us. We, well, how we, are we going to get we, anything if done? If there is, when you ask a question, Darla writes it down, and she will try and respond to it as soon as she can. Well, I was watching her. She did not write one answer it's down. It's taped, and the and, clerk uh, is the taking clerk. the minutes. Oh, the girls yep. are writing that yep. down? Yeah. Okay. Yep. She just answered someone from the last meetings. Okay. The and there's one. a rumor going around that there's over $20,000 missing out of the fund in the city. That's I say, it's a rumor. I would like to find out <laughs> if it's true or not. 
I wish we had it. Hmm. Yes. And I'd like to have you look into that. And also, I want to know why I talked to Darla a couple times mm -hmm. about putting restriction in the playground by the swimming beach and by the where the kids play there barefoot of keeping the dogs out of that area for sanitation reasons. People are walking barefoot in that sand all the time around the beach there. People are bringing their dogs there every morning because I fish a lot and I fish out there every morning. There's anywhere from five to 15 dogs walked on that beach and they're urinating on the lifeguard stand or urinating on the boat. <coughs> They're urinating in that sand all over. Who picks the urine up? They pick the fetus up, but the little kids are playing in that sand. It is full of urine. I think it's about time we shut that park down and have it a little safer for our children. And also for the sports area, make that safe too. Keep the dogs out of there. I love dogs. I got nothing against them, but the dogs have no place in our playgrounds. This is the only town that I've lived in, and I ain't young, that allowed dogs to run in a park. And I think that should be brought to a head and stopped in this town, on all parks. Because there's plenty of areas they can go down to Sand Point, walk their dogs down there. They don't want to be <clears throat> emptying themselves out in our parks where our children are. Because that's a sanitation hazard for our children. And I think our children should come before dogs. This is all up to every one of you. Who comes first? Our children, our grandchildren, or the dogs? Live on it and make your decision. And I hope you make the right one. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Next up is the city commissioner comments. Commissioner Nemechek. Uh, two things I'd like to comment on. Uh, first off, I live across from the park. And I am in total agreement with you about dogs. Umpteen people come and they go across that bridge and then they let their dog loose. Or they drive down by the skate park and then they let their dog loose on the beach. Now. What a lot of dog owners don't realize is how many people are really afraid of dogs. My mother was frightfully afraid of dogs. She was bitten by a dog badly when she was a teenager. I'm in total agreement that people should keep their dogs on a leash and they should not be allowed in the beach area. Secondly, uh, Escanaba closed their compost site. I go to the Delta County compost site because I end up half the time cutting my grass when our site isn't open. Uh, it only takes me about five or ten minutes to get there. Uh, it's all paved. Uh, I prefer it. And I go there instead of going to Gladstone and I think we should consider closing the compost site. That's my feeling. I, Escanaba closed their compost site. They use the Delta County compost site. I use the Delta County compost site. I prefer it. And this one is a little closer, but not a lot closer. If you live in town, it's... The other thing is, I think we should um, consider and start thinking about not the sports park, but closing the ski hill. Marquette closed theirs. They can't have Escanaba closed theirs. I think we should close the ski hill and sell that property to a developer that would put multifamily dwellings in there with a community center up on top. I think it would make a lot of sense. Those are my random thoughts. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Nemechek. Commissioner Thompson? I think the WPPI energy agreement was really, is really a good thing for Gladstone. I think, you know, one of the one of the benefits of living in Gladstone, we, we enjoy some pretty doggone reasonable electric and gas rates. I mean, we pay less for energy than a lot of people around us. It, just trying to emphasize one of the one of the one of the many good things about living in Gladstone. That's all I've got to say. All right, thank you, Commissioner Gay. Yeah, um, I'm I'm just kind of curious. There, there's 
it, we've had recently in, in public comments, people have come up and they've, you know, they've brought up issues that we haven't really even talked about. And I guess my question is, have, have the people in the public that are coming to these meetings, have you talked to staff? Has anyone, have you, have you contacted the city manager or contacted the department head to deal with these issues? Because frankly, this is the first time I've heard of it. I've talked to her twice. And she promised me she'd put the science up. Well, You're I. You're a liar. Uh, uh, sir, so sir, this is for our time. Well, sorry. It, it, my my question is, is I mean, if I, I would have to ask the city manager what, and I'm not going to do that now. But I mean, that that's the proper procedures to go through the city manager. She's going to direct you to the department head for whatever your question, whatever your issue is. I mean, this is not. I mean. You can, you can come to a city meeting and say whatever you want, as long as it's reasonable and you're not, you know, hammering on somebody and unfairly. But the reality is if you really want to get something done, that, you know, there's a process you go through with the city manager to the city staff and, and, and get it dealt with. Um, you know, the other, thing that, the other thing is this compost site. We have talked so much about this compost site, I, frankly, I'm getting tired of it. I'm just getting tired of it. There are so many other big issues in this town to talk about and deal with. We've talked as much about the compost site as we have our long-term liability. It, it, you know, and the, the, the idea to me to actually pay or increase fees to justify paying for uh, armed security, armed or unarmed, doesn't matter, is absurd. It's absolutely absurd to even waste time. How much management time has been taken up from our city manager, uh, Parson, or uh, public works director, his time? How much time? How many? That translates to true dollars that could be utilized. That's called, you know, management time, and it has a cost. Uh, I, I'm with uh, I'm with Commissioner Nemechek. I'm this this compost site is just I don't think it's something that we need to mess with, and we need to seriously consider doing something something different because what we're doing is not working and that is no slight to ken levine because him and his volunteers did a heck of a job up there but we can't expect volunteers to oh, no. continue to police that no. and if people aren't behaving as adults should behave then you got to make a change Thank we we can't afford we can't raise rates on city residents to pay to have security up there to keep you know the five percent of people that are acting foolish <coughs> from doing it. There's I can't justify that. Thank you. So that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Gay, Commissioner B. Well, basically, I want to let you know that I went to the municipal Michigan Municipal League convention September 16th through the 18th. It's the first time I ever been to anything like that way too much information. I took 12 pages of notes. And that was just the beginning. I hardly scratched the surface of what this league does for the cities. And I can tell you one thing. I'm very excited to be part of what they've talked about. I went to different sessions. I'll just give you an idea of some of them. I went to place and processing matter is your is your community investment ready, which actually talks about the master plan. Now I know why cities have a master plan. And I have pages of information on this stuff, so anyone that wants to know how city government works, I'm getting myself educated in the process. And it kind of changes my view on how things run, why we have things in place. I went to a thing called Suburban Strategies for Success. I went to a lot of stuff, and this is how working together with communities strengths to create joint beneficial things for the cities. You try to look out in your community, other cities, and see what you can do. I also went to Waves of Waterfront Economic Development Strategies. You can see it just talks about what the property values of your waterfront is for development compared to being used by industries and stuff like that. Very, very interesting for getting your city solvent. All of this stuff. I, I just, it, it just amazes me. In the general session, I listened to the state legislators. They had uh, community excellent of award programs for 
five or six communities that came up with innovative stuff. I'm hoping Gladstone can be in there next year. You're just coming up with something that just helps turn your city around and get everyone motivated to be part of uh, all the changes that your city has coming. Uh, I also went to what do you want to know about the design and construction process, but we're too afraid to ask. Basically, that is insight to understanding the effective plot, of course, for progress and decision making necessary to meet the expectation for a project in your city. I was on the DDA board a lot of times, so I went to uh, a thing called uh, Discover Downtown Traverse City. Boy, did I learn a lot there. I learned so much there that I, I don't even want to tell you what I learned, but I, I, I want people, if they want to know about some of this stuff, get a hold of me. I got literature and I got information on it. And the main thing I wanted to say is probably the top five things that I thought we could do in Gladstone. I wrote 10, but I only want to give you five. And I'll pick them out. Number, number one in my eyes would be transparency is a must. We don't try to hide anything. No city tries to hide anything. But I think transparency is very important. And I, and I think we have it. I'm, I'm not saying the city has this or not. I'm just saying this is what, what I got out of this thing. Dedicated and consistent staff in place results in more progress. And I think we, we, we probably have that too. I'm, I'm just starting to learn the people in our community that run our city. But that, that's a must. You, you need to have stable people in positions. Ambassadors, the city commission, city staff, and workers need to work with inside the city, whether you're a city resident or not, be good ambassadors for the city. Proactive instead of reactive. I was a reactive person. Every time something happened that I didn't like, I would be out talking about it or saying something about it. Instead, I'm going to try to be more proactive and come up with ideas and suggestions and community things so I don't have to worry about how things are turning out. They're turning out for the betterment of everybody. And the other thing that I really think is really the most important thing of why I'm sitting here is fiscal stability. Poorly funded retirement systems are among the biggest challenge facing states and local governments. Expert agrees Experts agree that the retirement system should be at least 80% accurately funded to ensure that we are able to meet the promise to provide the defined pension benefits of our workers. I, th I think that's still key and I'd still like to get some type of fund, restricted fund for it. Everybody have I've talked to so far down there and, and people I've talked to up here, you need to start paying your debt somehow. Regardless of what other commissions are doing, I, I think I want to start somehow paying down that debt. And the main thing that I also learned in doing that, every dollar that you save today is two dollars for the future of the city, for the future of our kids. And there's tons more stuff they did, but I thought it was well worth my time being there. I didn't know what to expect, but I was very satisfied in getting some insight to be proactive and hopefully I get a lot of support from the community, from the commissioner, the city, and, and all the residents to uh, move forward with a lot of these ideas that I haven't even told you yet, but these communities were in the same boat we were five years ago. Within five years, they pulled themselves out into the black and they didn't raise taxes. They just found better ways to do the services that need to be done more efficiently. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner View. All right, yeah, I do think something has to be done with that compost site too. I'm not sure what it is, but we're definitely gonna have to talk about that in the coming months. And also I've had a resident ask me about the fungus on all the trees and Mark said that he would talk a little bit about. I'm gonna sit here and get up. Mm -hmm. Probably up there, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring a slide.
Um, speaking of reactive, um, you know, the trees are, that's a big reactive issue right there. So um, they respond to things just like people do. And um, quite often it's the weather and just the conditions that you have at a given time during the year. Each year could be a little bit different. Um, I, I haven't really had a whole lot of time to take an analysis of all the trees here in the streets and stuff. Um, my intention was to come in and start some sort of tree planting program and stuff like that, but the more I've been here, there's a lot of stuff we just need to remove, quite honestly, and start taking care of and to get a handle on and can just make them safe and healthy. Um, but what, what I've been getting phone calls on and what uh, Jay's talking about is the, uh, the mayor's talking about is that um, I noticed a lot of leaf tar spot this year. It's just a bacterial thing you see on the maple trees. Yeah. It's a round black spot. Black spot. Looks kind of tarry looking. Yeah. That's called tar spot. It's just a matter of the conditions are moist, may not dry out, and it breeds bacteria. So that's what that is. It won't hurt the tree. It drops the leaves early. They, they protect themselves and get rid of it. Um, so the only thing you can really do is rake up your leaves, get rid of them so they don't sit there, get the bacteria away, kind of like a cold, try to take care of yourself. Um, so I'm not concerned about that issue, I mean, but um, there is one, one tree issue that we do need to look forward to, though, um, and I think we're going to see it here in the next few years. Um, it's the emerald ash borer. Um, it's here. And I think we're going to have a lot of ash trees removed here in the next few years. So just, just that's coming. So um, there, I saw a lot of that. The lead, the, they started, they're starting to look real skeleton like the ash trees are this year. Next year, there are going to be a lot of dead ones, I think. And it's going to continue till they're all gone, probably. So that's just coming. That's all I have. If you have any questions, just holler. All right. Thank you, Mark. Yep. All right, and that's all I had. So next up is the city clerk comments. Um, the only ha a couple things I had, um, I included a memo in your packet. It is also available on the, the city's website with the packet. Um, legislative priorities from the Michigan Council of Elected Officials. Um, some bills that are being introduced or being considered um, for vote by our representatives and um, uh, the Council of Elected Officials, what they're supporting or hoping that you will support to the, the state representatives. And then also in a publication to receive um, from the Michigan Association of Municipal Clerks, their quarterly newsletter included that. And um, as they have more information coming out with the capital update on those, um, I'll keep forwarding those to you. Um, but being our legislative body, um, these are things that eventually will impact us, you know, with elections, purchasing election equipment, or will the state purchase that for us, things like that. Um, so just thought it was really good information for you to have and keep a heads up. The other thing is um, absentee ballots are available um, in my office now for if you're going to be um, out of uh, town for the election. Can you keep your co comments? Excuse me. Can you guys be quiet while she's talking, please? Um, I was just and they're just they're available. Um, please contact me. I can mail you an application or you can stop down and see me. Um, they are now available and going out for the November 3rd election. I have a question. For sure. you. How, how if somebody needs to register to, to vote, do they have to go down to the license bureau or can they register here? They could do either whatever is convenient for them. The deadline, I believe, is um, coming up October 5th. So they're going to want to do that soon. Um, to, to be eligible to vote for this November 3rd election. Um, you can come down to my office, you will need a picture ID, um, or you can go to the Secretary of State. A lot of times that happens when you're renewing your license and you don't even know that you've, you know, done, um, they go through it kind of quick, um, voter registration. So if you're not sure, give me a call. I can make sure that you are registered um, or just step down and we'll get you registered. But after October 5th, I can still register you. You just still won't be able to vote in the November 3rd election. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. We are adjourned.